Hello, hopefully everyone is staying safe and staying home. I feel very grateful to live in a world today that technology and free software can be leveraged to connect people in such disconnected and difficult times, and to have an online conference like this. Hopefully you've all enjoyed this year's EmacsCon so far. Many thanks to all the people that made this possible. Anyways, welcome to my talk. Extend Emacs to modern GUI applications with EAF, the Emacs application framework. This will be my first ever talk, so apologies for my inexperience. Let us begin. About me. My name is Matthew Zeng. You can also call me MT or Mindu. I'm a Chinese Canadian living in Toronto, Ontario. Offline, I'm an undergrad studying mathematics at the University of Waterloo. Online, I'm an one of the admins of the Emacs China, the largest Emacs forum in China. So to all Chinese listening to my talk right now, feel free to check it out. And this is a link to my GitHub profile, to my projects that I'm involving. One's M Emacs, which is I'm the author of, a user-friendly full-feature Emacs configuration distribution. It is what I'm using right now, as well as the Emacs application framework which I help to maintain along with the other, other lazy cat, which of course is today's topic. So, as you might all might have already noticed, I'm currently using Emacs and, op and opening, navigating, closing all these websites that are rendered properly or within Emacs. This is all thanks to the EAF project. So we're living in a society that's heavily dependent on the internet and multimedia. It is unavoidable to run to some occasion that you need to open a fancy website that uses JavaScript and CSS, or you need to watch some videos. However, due to the nature and history of Emacs, it cannot render all these modern graphics effectively and efficiently. Emacs is solely a text-based editing environment, and I argue that this is not a bad thing. In fact, it is one of the reasons that me, and I believe many of you as well, are attracted to Emacs in the first place. Unfortunately, this results in us having to open a dedicated web browser to browse the internet, open a dedicated video player to watch some videos, or a PDF render to read some documents. So far, Emacs cannot do all these tasks on its own, but can only be achieved using other external applications. So the other the author, Manati LazyCat, or LazyCat in short, didn't want to use all these external applications. He wanted to have an uninterrupted Emacs experience. He wanted to truly live in Emacs. However, it will be a lot of work to build this modern application from scratch. There is simply no time or resource to do that. So LazyCat thought of utilizing existing applications and to try to make it collaborate with Emacs. There are many solutions available. One of it is the Emacs X Windows Manager, and I'm sure a lot of you already know that, the EXWM. However, it didn't work for him because although EXWM opens the door to use other applications within Emacs, it, as a fine window manager, cannot modify, customize, or extend other software from Emacs. For example, it cannot modify the behavior when you press a key in Chromium or a PDF viewer. Therefore, it cannot utilize the rich Emacs ecosystem that's been growing for almost 40 years. On the other hand, in the EF browser, so if you MX EF open browser with history, you can see on the lower half of my screen, a list of histories sorted by my personal most visited sites. And you can search for a site that you've been, been to or search for some keyword and in a search engine. So this is all achieved by utilizing the popular completion framework in the Emacs ecosystem, I. So Lysica decided to develop a solution of his own in 2018, namely the EAF project. So I joined the development last year, 2019. EAF is a highly customizable and extens extensible GUI application framework that extends Emacs to graphical capabilities using PyQt5, and it is not a window manager. Right. 
So in the README, you can see a list of GIFs showcasing all the available EF applications. A browser, a Markdown Previewer, a video player, a PDF viewer, and more. Today, I don't have enough time to demonstrate each one of them, but I will select a couple applications to show you. So since we are already using EF Browser, we'll start with this. <laughs> Besides using the classic Ctrl N, Ctrl P, you can also use the Vim style SJKL to move up or down. Also, Meta Shift Comma or G to the beginning of page, Meta Shift Period or Capital G to the end of page. Vimeo and surfing keys, uh, Vimeo and surfing keys are popular keyboard-based browsing techniques in Chrome, and they've been put it here as well. You can press F to toggle markers pointing to all the links in the current page. Say I want to visit the wiki which comes very, very handy when you want to configure EF to your liking. So you see the marker on top of wiki is DD. Press DD and you enter. And now you're navigated to this link, so you don't need to use your mouse at all. So a full list of key bindings can be found when you control HM just as any other Emacs major mode. So you don't have to remember everything, all the key bindings I said to you. So this is a global binding application to every other EF application as well. So you can find it under the wiki or, or you can find it under the wiki in the key binding section. So press F again and use NS. Press enter. Now you're in the key binding web page. You can see all of the key bindings available in every EF application and you can try them out. And you can customize your key bindings using EF bind key, you can customize Ctrl N as in the web page to, to scroll up in the EF PDF viewer, or you can unbind an existing binding using, using EF bind key, bind it to new, so it doesn't bind to anything. Okay, so here comes the important part. If you want to customize EF, you should visit the customization page in the wiki. So now I press Meta B to go back in history and go to the customization page. Press F, press A, B, enter, and now we're in the customization page. So the first customization option you see is dark mode. Uh, so let's say if you want to turn on the dark mode for EF browser and you don't want to use your mouse to do all this stuff, you press C and you can select C to toggle the correct browsing. You can see a lot of markers available pop up again, but they're not at they're not on top of links, but instead of paragraphs. You select the paragraph of your choice. In this case, you want LS, which comes here. And then you just you just move the cursor like what you always do in Emacs. And now you select everything and use meta W to <coughs> Excuse me. Meta W to copy the text. The text. Now we meta shift column to evaluate it, what we just copied, and set that to true. And press R or F5 to refresh the page. Voila! We have the dark mode enabled. So there are. Well, let's toggle toggle it back off for now. Now we meta shift column again and we find the, the one we just used and change it back to false and refresh the page back in the light mode. So there are many other customization options available. You can either evaluate like what we just did or add it to your Emacs configuration file. So in the wiki, you can, have, you can, you can make the EF browser to, to continue where you left off, similar to the Chromium setting. And you can make EF the de default browser in Emacs by aliasing, uh, aliasing browse web to EF open browser or, or set the browse URL browser function to EF open browser. There's just some tricks. And there are also uh, an experimental app blocker currently take in place. And so therefore it can block some elements, but not all. So we, we, we really encourage people to help us test out and add more conditions in so you can so the EF browser is able to download any files from the internet and it will be do downloaded using 
area too. And you can also customize the EF browser download path using EF set. So it's a function that we defined similar to S set, the normal set we know. So by default, the download file is stored in your home directory slash downloads, and you can change that whenever you want. You can also disable saving browsing history. So remember when I press when I use MX EF open browser with history, I see all the histories here. But if you want more privacy, you don't want that to be available at all, you can turn it off easily with EF set, set queue and set that remember history to false. You can also set your default search engine. So, so right now we have Google, although not, not really good, but Google and also DuckDuckGo, which is a better search engine. Well, uh, yeah, ethically better search engine. So you can also configure the zoom. So the default zoom of your browser is 1.0, so you can convert convert default zoom to 1.25 so, so when you open any web page it will, it will be zoomed by default. Uh, you can also de disable JavaScript although I personally don't really suggest you to do it because it will basically break a lot of our features because a lot, a lot of the browse, browser related features must be implemented using JavaScript. Uh, but yeah, you can do it if you really want to. And there are also some customization on EF camera you can do as well. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to EF PDF viewer. So now, <coughs> now let's open a PDF file using EF. So that's one something already here, but let's open it here. So EF open and select introduction to programming in Emacs Lisp. Uh, I have it already open, but it's okay. So you have the file. <coughs> yeah, you have all the files displayed. You have all the pages displayed, sorry. Yes, and there are 273 pages in total, but notice like how fast it is to, to browse all the pages. It is blazingly fast. That's all thanks to Python and MUPDF which you don't really get from Emacs list. So let's say if you want to jump to page 50, you press P and enter 50. Oops, 50 and here we are. We are at page 50. You can uh, look at the lower right to verify the page we are on. And you can, you can use I to toggle dark mode as expected. And let's say you want to find table of contents. So use control S, the, the Emacs default binding for iSearch, and search for table of contents. Here we are. It is highlighted for you. And you can control S for more, but there's only one or one match one out of one. You control G to disable the highlight, and you see a lot of options for you to go. Okay, let's say if you want to go to the preface. So that is, you press F, which, which is also similar to EF browser, you press F for Vimeo, and you see the marker, now it changed to WM. You press WM, and then you can go to the preface. Now we're at the preface. So now you finished reading, you want to save your progress? No worries, it is already saved for you by EF. You can save the closed document using X, and opening again, AF open, and the file, see your ad preface again. So you're right at where you left off. Left off. You can also use MX org store link or control C L, which I prefer <laughs> to if you want to save a particular page in a org mode file. So now I go back to my presentation file. I don't need this anymore. Uh, so you use control C. Control L or I think MX org insert link. So you can find the file right here and you press enter and you press enter for the description again and now it's right here. And control C, control O to open it. Voila, you're back. Right. So let's now demonstrate the EF video player. 
So MX EF open. So you use EF open whenever you want to open some file. You use EF open browser if you want to use some actual application that's not re really related to a file. So EF open and select the video you want. So video demo. So I already have a video demo re ready. So because I recorded a video of the demo of the EF camera, have a look. So let's move to the beginning. Hello, people from the future. This is a demo of the EF video player that demos the EF camera feature. So as you can see on the screen of me inside my camera, and the screen is actually with all within Emacs. Right. So the video itself is and as well. <laughs> you can open this using EF open camera, and which I'm already in here, and you can press P to capture a photo so the photo is by default stored at your home slash downloads directory and you can modify it freely so if you go here and you can see the camera stored yes. right here yeah so why what, I, what <laughs> yes. I used here so you press space to pause what i used here is the year so if open this entire so basically so in there you, you go to you, you select the file that well should be opened by EF and I use that so it, it, it detects that it wants to use the EF image viewer so I accidentally tested EF image viewer before I noticed so that, that, that gives the image of the photo I just took using EF camera and as you can see you can I can use HL the, the VIM binding to navigate in the time timestamp in the video and I can use J, uh, JK to, to change the volumes of the video. <clears throat> all right, so now you've seen all the basic usages of the EF project. It comes to the question of what is the magic behind it? All right, let's open the hacking page in the wiki. The design is laid out in a diagram here. So, and let's put it side by side along with my text so you can go you can follow through right okay let me sorry let me drink some water <clears throat> so this page in the wiki went into a lot of detail uh, due to the time constraint i'll just rephrase some of the ideas here so for anyone interested please have a look at the wiki yourself the easiest way to think about EAF is that the actual GUI application is started in the background. Then the frame of the application is attached to the appropriate location on the Emacs window. So EAF linked Qt5 with Emacs using Elisp and Python. On the Python side, which is colored yellow in the image, we have QGraphics view and QGraphics scene objects. These are used to simulate the Emacs window buffer design. Where QGraphics scene is similar to buffers in Emacs, it controls the state and the content details of the application. While QGraphics view is similar to QGraphics view is similar to Emacs window, it populates the buffer QGraphics scene to the foreground at the appropriate position. Whenever an EF mode buffer brings to a background. Uh, whenever an EF mode buffer brings to the foreground, sorry, a QGraphics view instance is created. And whenever the buffer goes to the background, the QGraphics view instance is then deleted. While QGraphics scene, the actual process remains running in the background until the EF mode buffer is killed. GPA compositing is used to ensure that QGraphics view and QGraphics scene is synchronized real time. Using QWindow's set parent function, the QGraphics view is attached to a appropriate location on the Emacs frame, so that although GUI applications are not running within Emacs, they look as if they were. So when user types on the keyboard, it is first received by the Emacs EF, EF mode buffer, and then it sends the event to QGraphics scene using Dbus. When user clicks on the GUI application, it is received by the QGraphics view and processed in Python. Ellipse can communicate with Python through Dbus. In other words, 
In other words, you can customize and extend Emacs not just using Lisp. And now you can use Python. This way one can leverage all the Python properties like multi-threading or some other stuff. The entire Python ecosystem can be utilized as well. Such as the Qt web engine that is the basis for our AEF browser and PyMU PDF is the basis for the EF PDF viewer. So this really opens the window to many, many new possibilities to extend Emacs using EAF. All right, back here. We are always looking for people to join the development. There are many, many more work that needs to be done, like such, such as testing and debug EF on more Linux distros and window managers such as i3 and stuff. And uh, when you can also add new EF applications or debug and enhance existing EF applications. Or you can port EF to native VLAN, which I just discussed with the, the Emacs WebKit author, uh, Akira Kyle. And he he told me that like really like Emacs really uh, EF doesn't really work on na native VLAN because it uses X VLAN, so it doesn't work on the PGDK port of Emacs. So, and we also need people to port EF to non-free operating systems, including Windows and Mac OS. And that's because like Dbus is a Linux specific feature, so it doesn't really work on other platform. We need to change, replace it with some alternative. And QGraphics Scene somehow doesn't really work on Mac OS. And there are many other to-do lists available. So please have a look if, and see if there's anything you want to work on. All right. So since this is a pre-recorded talk, I won't be able to do the Q&A real time in the video. However, I will be around on the collaborative pad and the IRC EmasConf, EmasConf questions to answer any questions it pops up. And you can also submit an issue on the repo and you can check the wiki for some other guides and tricks. All right, thank you guys. And hopefully you find this EF project very interesting and enjoy the rest of EmacsCon 2020.